Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you get this message. This is Zion Reform United Church of Christ of Chambersburg's online message for May 14th, 2023. I want to welcome you to come and join us in our sanctuary at 1045 every Sunday morning. We have an enlivened service and just would love to see you in the pews. With that, let us get started with our call to worship. Creator God, you call us. We say yes to your invitation and we gather as one to worship you. Creator God, you invite us to stay with you. You never leave us, you never forsake us. You abide with us and we gather as one to worship you. Creator God, you love us. Extravagant is your welcome, great is your faithfulness. Your grace overflows and we gather as one to worship you. Our scripture today comes from John 14, starting with the 15th verse. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives in you, and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, open our hearts so that we may come to love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our soul, with all our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Maggie Perkins worked as a teacher for six years and and then in 2018, she gave birth to a daughter. And she discovered that she stayed late at school and when she did, her daycare would impose a fine upon her. So she began what she called quiet quitting. For Perkins, this meant leaving school as soon as her official hours were over. Within education above and beyond is, isn't compensated, she said. And according to surveys, the typical teacher works 54 hours per week. Perkins decided that she wasn't going to do it. She set a boundary and she decided that she was going to stick to it for her family's sake. Eventually, she quit teaching entirely and began to pursue her PhD, but she continues to advise teachers on what she calls quiet quitting, telling them not to bring their home up work, their work home or to spend personal money or class on classroom supplies. Quiet quitting, she says, is a survival tactic. It's coping mechanism. More and more people in our world today are taking this type of approach. They're not actually quitting their jobs, but they're staying, their jobs and staying home, but they're stopping the practice of going above and beyond. Their integrity is maybe dwindling a little in the name of boundaries. In fact, a recent survey revealed that 21% of Americans describe themselves as quiet quitters. I'm not gonna work myself anymore, or at least I'm not going to overwork myself anymore, said one young IT professional. Quiet quitting is a self-care tactic, said another freelance writer. It means that you do the job you're paid to do and nothing more, nothing more. What if moms took that approach? Today's Mother's Day and happy Mother's Day to all those mothers out there. But what if moms took that approach? Think about it. I'm not going to feed the baby today. Sorry, I got my 40 hours in. I'm not going to put a boo-boo on that hurt you have. I got my time in. I'm sorry, I can't do it today. I, I've got to take a break. No hugs today. Sorry, I've reached my quota. That would be awful. My mother gave 110% to her family all the time. And because of that, we were so, so greatly blessed. And think about it, when you think of mothers, what if Jesus took that approach? Sorry, no prayers answered today. 
I've reached my quota. No comfort today. I'm resting today. Nope, I can't feed my children. Got my hours in. Can't do it. Sorry, the world doesn't get fed today. I have no time to water the crops, provide fish in the sea. And, and really, who really needs to breathe air anyway? Now, don't get me wrong. Boundaries are a good thing, and boundaries should be adhered to sometimes. But if they're not taken too far, and, and they need to be kept into context sometimes. Sometimes there is something that's more important, more important to the lives of others, more important to your well-being and to your spiritual well-being. The importance of setting boundaries, it goes all the way back in biblical tradition, back to the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it a holy, God said to Moses. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is Sabbath to the Lord your God. On that day you shall not do any work. The Sabbath day is all about boundaries. It's all about, but God supports boundaries. It's a reminder that we are valuable for who we are. And hear this, if you hear nothing else, we're valuable for who we are, not for what we do. We're valuable for who we are, we're children of God children of the living God and we're valuable for who we are, not for what we do. We're precious children of God. We're not cogs in a wheel. If quiet quitting means maintaining a day of rest, well then we should all be quiet quitters because that's important, at least one day a week. But I worry about the negative side to this trend. I worry about the negative side that involves people phoning in their job or doing the bare minimum, or not caring about their labors, not having integrity in their work. If we quietly quit in this way, we have a problem because as Christians, Jesus wants us to be engaged deeply in life, just as he was engaged with the people. In the Gospel of John, Jesus predicts that he will leave his disciples, but he does not mean he'll quit on them. He never quit on them. He promises that God will give them another counselor to be with them forever. The counselor is not a guidance counselor. It's not a vocational counselor. It's not a mental health counselor or a marriage counselor. Instead, it's called parakletos. Parakletos, the Greek word. It's a counselor who stays with you. It's a counselor who encourages you, who comforts you, who helps you, who advocates for you. Parakletos, the Greek word. It's tough to translate in English since it includes a range of meanings. Different Bible translations call it, one calls it companion, one calls it a helper, one calls it a comforter, a friend, a counselor, an advocate. However you translate the word parakletos, it means that God is never, never going to quit on you. Our Lord will stay close beside us, working always for the good in our lives. Now today's Mother's Day, and we honor all the mothers that never gave up on us the mothers that loved us unconditionally, the mothers that were there for us no matter what. Gee, mothers, Jesus, sounds a lot the same, same kind of things. Loved us unconditionally, never gave up on us, were there for us no matter what. What this counselor or this Holy Spirit we receive does is nothing new but it's a continuation of the work of Jesus, just as mothers are continuations of the work of Jesus, at least good mothers are. The counselor is the spirit of truth which connects to Jesus being the way and the truth and the life that we looked at last week. The counselor is the one who lives with you and will be in you, which is exactly what Jesus has promised he will do when he says, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. He doesn't leave you alone. He sends one to be with you always. There is no quitting with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No quitting at all. All three persons of the Trinity are present and active in our lives all the time. Even when we're feeling stressed out, even when we're feeling overwhelmed, even when we want to quit, whatever it is we're doing, all three are seen most clearly in the face of Jesus the one who never takes his foot off the gas but keeps moving forward, always there supporting and comforting and loving you. He remains engaged with us, giving us the truth, the life, and the love all the time and invites us to remain connected to him. So I say to you today in this message, stay connected to Jesus and you are connected then to the Holy Spirit and to God. 
to the entire Trinity. Stay connected through loving, through serving, through prayer, through reading your Bible. And remember, don't quit no matter what. God won't quit on you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we humbly come before you this day so thankful for your support, your love, and your comfort. Thankful for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us always so that we are never alone. Thankful for the mothers that out there that love tenderly and graciously give more than 110%. Lord, we pray for those that are lost and lonely, those that are struggling, those that are hurting. Be with them, Lord. Comfort them. Send your Holy Spirit to surround them with your love. We pray this and whatever else we pray as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please bow your heads for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord send you out into the world, surrounded by his spirit always, never alone, always surrounded by the love of Jesus. And may this day, may you feel the peace, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.